Hey there, it's Shauna. I hope you're doing great. Welcome to your weekly astrology forecast for March 5th. So this week I'm calling fiery ambitions because this week you may feel like that. You may feel fired up. You may feel ambitious. You may feel as though there's something that you need to get off your chest this week and it's a great week for it. So I'm excited to share the astrology of this week with you and then I have three tips for you to have an amazing week. Uh, so the, the main energy that we're really building toward this entire week during the bulk of the work week is the last quarter moon in Sagittarius. And so this last quarter moon in Sagittarius is happening on Friday. Uh, so this means that we're towards the end, the second half of the lunar cycle. We had our full moon in Virgo last week. And so now the moon is waning. That just means that it's uh, appearing smaller and smaller in the sky. So the light is starting to, uh, starting to shrink. It's starting to uh, shed light, so to speak. And so we look at the symbology of that. We look at the moon as... Uh, becoming more and more dark and so what that means is this is the time that symbolically it's about uh, it's about sharing things it's about disseminating information and ideas what it is that you've collected uh, it's also about tying up loose ends and letting things go and then at that last quarter moon point on Friday this week is this point where it's a time of reconciling or getting closure or coming to terms with yourself on what it is that you're working on at this point in time. And uh, it's in the sign of Sagittarius. And so Sagittarius is all about grand visions and big ideas. It's a fire sign. So it's like got this very uh, like seeking, seeking wisdom, seeking ideas, seeking greatness kind of feel to it. So, you know, whatever it is that you're working on, you may be coming to terms this entire week and especially Friday with where, how far it is that you've come, where it is that you're going, and if there's like a pivot that needs to happen, if there are things that are on your plate that you need to offload so that you can move forward in the next month, things like that. Uh, and then this weekend, we have two different aspects that are kind of interesting that are more dynamic. We have Mercury square Saturn. And so Mercury is about the mind, the thought process, it's how we communicate. And then Saturn is about structure, devotion, and responsibility. Uh, Saturn brings form to things. Saturn uh, asks us to create a limitation so that we can create something in the material world. And so Mercury square Saturn, it's not the most fun aspect because it does require that we put form to things. It does require a certain level of um, responsibility and like a weightiness to our words where um, if there's an idea that you're working on or something that uh, that requires a lot of intellectual energy, this is a great time to really dig into that and to dedicate yourself 100% to what it is that you're working on. Uh, the shadow side or the problematic side of Saturn when uh, we're not in a place where we can really dedicate ourselves to the thing that it is that we're working on, it can feel like uh, in it can feel sometimes like restrictions are being imposed on you and it can be frustrating. And so um, the way to work with that is really to figure out where it is that you can control the restrictions and the limitation. You know, can you take control of your schedule and how it is that you format your time? Uh, time may be a big focus this week because uh, Saturn is also very much associated with time and how it is that, uh, how it is that we use our time in a wise manner. Uh, the other thing that's happening this week that's a little bit different, very different actually, is we also have Mars trine Uranus. And so Mars is about action, it's about doing, it's also about boundaries and um, breaking boundaries in this case as well. Uh, Uranus is about breaking down structures. And so Uranus is the planet that is uh, associated with surprise insights, surprise ideas, and like these aha moments. It's like a breaking, like a breakdown, breakthrough kind of energy. And so when we have our physical energy, which is Mars, combined with breakthrough and, um, and new insights and new things and doing things differently, it's kind of a, a dynamic combination. 
And so like these two together, the Mercury Saturn, which is about uh, structure and devotion and really digging into something. And then the Mars and Uranus, which is about uh, changing a system and, and like retooling something this weekend, it may feel a little bipolar. It may feel like, oh my gosh, what's happening here? Uh, so, you know, I think there's a different, a few different ways to work with this and I'll share some with you in the tips. But I think the biggest thing is that it is important to focus this week. It is important to focus, especially your physical energy, uh, the physical and the mental energy and to know what your priorities are. That's really important this week. Uh, but then at the same time, if things don't go as planned, how can you roll with the punches and how can you take advantage of that? Uh, so I think it really, I really see it starting because the, the, the challenge here is how do you structure your time? Because that's Mercury square Saturn. And then when stuff, when there's hiccups, how do you, um, how do you remain open and creative for that to happen? And I think in order to have that openness, to be able to respond uh, naturally and organically and to just flow with something, the structure needs to be in place first so that you have that, uh, that comfort of the structure to fall back on. So uh, I hope that makes sense. It, and like interestingly too, this weekend um, we'll have daylight savings time. So for those of us in the world that, uh, that use daylight savings time, that means the clocks will spring forward. So time is an issue this week. Um, so uh, all that being said, I have three tips for you to really make the most of this week. Tip number one is to share your ideas this week. And this is really important because we're in this, uh, this phase of the disseminating moon. We're in the waning cycle of the moon where it is a great time to share what it is that you have to offer. And this can be, um, when I say this, share your ideas, it can be something as uh, like uh, public as like writing a public post or writing if you blog or like sharing something in a more public form, or it can just be sharing something with an acquaintance or a, fr or a friend. Um, the magnitude of the scale uh, isn't really important, but I want you to really get in the mindset of what is it that you have to give this week? What is it that you have to offer? And that's really important. Uh, tip number two is to do focused but mellow physical exercises this week. And so I say this very specifically because we do have this aspect with Mars, which is about physical energy and physical vitality. Um, but at the same time, we have this energy with Mercury in the mind, which is going on. And so uh, this combination, it's good for you to have some kind of physical outlet this week. And maybe you already have a, a regimen that you use, a physical uh, exercise or something to move your body. Um, but I want you to focus on... Uh, I don't want you to overexert yourself this week. It's important to move, but I want you to do it in a very mindful way. And so this is going to be very soothing with uh, the Uranus and the Saturn that's happening because uh, there could be a tendency to get like really amped up. And um, sometimes when Uranus is around, it can feel like things are happening so quickly. And so I do want you to move, but I want you to like slow it down. So focus and mellow. So what that means is like uh, uh, Qigong, Tai Chi, yoga is excellent as long as it's like more diligent and focused. Um, focusing on weight training or uh, like strength building exercises is really great this week as well. Uh, so that's tip number two. And then tip number three is to do alternate nostril breathing at least a few times this week and so you can google this or you know look it up on youtube there's a million different uh instructional videos for this uh, it's also called nadi shodhana as well in, in sanskrit and so it's literally just breathing in and out through one nostril at a time and it's very balancing and soothing for the nervous system which is what i want for you this week um again with the Mercury and the Saturn and the Mars and the Uranus, like this can get us really amped up and really excited. There's a lot of fire energy as well. Um, Mercury is in the sign of Aries, which is definitely not about slow and steady. It's like about action and moving forward. And so what I want for you is to have that focus, to have that center so that you can move quickly, but in a very focused way. So that's tip number three is do alternate nostril breathing at least a few times this week. And let me know how it goes. You know, maybe 
it you love it maybe you hate it I don't know but at least try it and uh, so then I have also a quote that I want to share with you uh, so this is especially around the topic of um, anger because Mars is related to among many other things anger and like that that fiery energy that can come up and so this is from the women who run with the wolves by Clarissa Picola Estes um, and so this is from one of the stories in here uh, called the crescent moon bear and she talks about uh, the messiness of raw emotions so I'll share it with you uh, even raw and messy emotions can be understood as a form of light, crackling and bursting with energy. We can use the light of rage or anger in a positive way in order to see into places we cannot usually see. A negative use of rage or anger concentrates destructively in one tiny spot, like acid creating an ulcer. It burns a black hole right through all of the delicate layers of our psyche. But there is another way. All emotion, even rage or anger, carries knowledge, insight, what some call enlightenment. Our rage can, for a time, become teacher. A thing not to be rid of so fast, but rather something to climb the mountain for. Something to personify via various images in order to learn from, deal with internally, and shape into something useful in the world as a result. In a cohesive life, rage or anger is not a standalone item. It is a substance waiting for our transformative efforts. So I like that for that, for this particular week where there may be some, you know, not to say that you'll be angry this week, but I think there's going to be a lot of um, intense and fiery feelings. So, and you let me know how you're feeling too. I'm curious. Uh, one last thing to seal up this forecast is I will draw a card for you. And so this uh, same deck as last time, this is the Animal Spirit deck by the Wild Unknown, which I like very much because it's all different animals and it's beautiful. Uh, so I haven't picked one yet. We'll do this. I'm doing it right here with you. <laughs> I didn't plan this so this is the card isn't that cool it's like the it's like the story the crescent moon bear isn't that crazy oh my gosh that's so cool uh, so so the bear okay so a few different things with the symbolism of the bear so number one I like to look at the images on the card and just see what it makes me think of and I really am noticing like the the Sun here shining down on the bear it's really sweet um, so this is not a hibernating bear. He's like coming out into the sun and the sunshine and the beautiful rays and uh, like the life-giving force of the sunshine. And um, bears are very solid. They're very stable. And there's a certain sense of like uh, tenacity is the word that comes to mind. Like there's a sense of stability with the bear. So... Uh, this week that this could actually be a really sweet um, animal to meditate on to like be to embody that energy of the bear it's very solid and um, there's a sense of strength and pride there and like not being able to be moved or swayed by little tiny things that that come by so good some good food for thought uh, so that is your forecast for the week I hope that you enjoyed this if you did please share it with a friend because I like to get these messages out to as many people as possible. Um, and then other ways for you to connect with me as well. Uh, so I have Neo Feminine TV, which is a live weekly broadcast that I've just started. It's uh, every 
Thursday at 9 a.m. Pacific time. And then it's also available uh, that same day on YouTube and iTunes. So I'll have a link down below for you to connect there. So it's um, a place where I share things that are relevant based on the astrology, but also just general life stuff that, uh, that I feel is very important to talk about at this point in time. And so um, it is live, so you can call in and ask questions. You can, uh, if you want to remain anonymous, you can also email a question questions. So it's kind of like a live show slash um, Dear Abby kind of setup where I can uh, connect with you on a personal level too, live and right there. So I'm excited about it and it's really fun. And thank you to everyone who joined last week. It was uh, so much, uh, so much fun and it was nice to hear all of the, the great feedback. Uh, so that, I'll have a link down below for that. If you like guided meditations and you want to get more of those, more than just what I do for the new and full moon, you can join my meditation membership, which is a weekly guided meditation for every single week based on the astrology of the week. And so I'll have a link down below for that. And then of course, if you want a reading with me, uh, please send me an email. I do have um, I do have a date for March that I'm doing, which is, uh, the last Sunday in March, so that should be March 25th, if I'm getting that date right. Um, so if you are interested in a reading, please email me and we can get that set up. And I think that's all for now. <laughs> so sending you lots of love, wishing you a wonderful week, and I'll talk to you soon. Namaste.